Now you may ask me, what's been the feedback to date? Overall, it's been rather positive. It's not perfect, but rather positive. I have the feeling that most stakeholders on both sides of the political spectrums appreciate the effort that the DWP team, the challenge panel, and myself put into this review to ensure that it is with science and evidence based as much as possible. That said, there are a few concerns. One, a number of politicians, the more on the right wing, more the right on the left wing, as well as a number of other stakeholders, do not think I was radical enough with my recommendations. They want me to, to cut back more regulations. They want to make, make some major changes to HCC. Of course, the situation did not much improve with the unfortunate headline from the Prime Minister's recent op-ed, which notes, as I'm sure you're all aware of, health and safety laws are holding back business. But in fact, my review shows that this is not the case. To be clear, I don't think the Prime Minister really meant, basically, that this, his op-ed was primarily focused on health and safety legislation and cutting that back. I think that's one of the primary focuses there is the whole issue of better regulation. And it's something, if we've got a better regulation, as long as it's science-based, evidence-based, and risk-based, it's something that we can support. But we need to basically have the evidence there. We should not make simple statements. Secondly, and I think this will come up in the discussion here today, is that I've been bomb literally bombarded with emails and questions at various forums, such as this one, regarding the whole issue of exempting self-employed who don't pose harm to others from health and safety regulations. To be clear, what I'm saying is not radical. The change is very limited. It applies only to those self-employed who do not employ anyone and whose work means that they do not pose a risk to others. An example would be a novelist writer or a web page designer. The HSC would be very unlikely to prosecute a self-employed person in that position who injures themselves. This was confirmed by HSC in their evidence. This is something that I've been told by HSC since then. It's very, very clear. Sectors such as agriculture and construction will continue to be covered, as will all small businesses. It is vital that this change is accompanied by clear guidance to ensure that the, lim the limited scope is clearly understood. And based on the questions that I received at last week's House of Commons Scottish Select Committee uh, evidence session on our review, which Sarah Sevi also attended, that, that this should be done sooner rather than later. HSC needs to basically work on this as soon as possible. Finally, which also issues come, come out a lot, do note that any bogus self-employed people in sectors such as construction and agriculture will not be exempt. The consolidation of regulations. To be clear, I recommended in my review a consolidation of health and safety regulations by 35%. I never mentioned cuts of 50%. That number can only be received if one adds my suggested consolidations with the small number of cuts that I put forward, the further number of regulatory removals that integrated and received from HSC after my review was completed. Related to this, of course, is a question of resource. Does the HSC have resource to put, to put through these consolidation measures? In speaking to HSC uh, during the review process, they have informed me, even with the cuts that they have, they have, they have taken so far, they will be able to push through. The, to push through. But please actually ask the HSC about that. Don't ask me. I'm not, and I'm not, I'm not chief economist of HSC. But it's something we need to work on very closely, to be clear. HSC has quite a bit of work to do. If, for example, looking at reviewing all those ACOPs that, that should be done sooner rather than later. So, in conclusion, you may want to know what, what, I will, what, what, what will I do next? Aside from giving an odd lecture and a lofty review throughout the UK, I plan personally to focus on two of the big picture recommendations coming out of my review. A, that, that is to establish a European Parliament Committee to look at risk-based policy making. I think it's absolutely crucial. I feel in many cases of being active, being, being Swedish, not being a UK citizen, never having voted in this country, by the way. I think it's very, it's very important for us to have an active engagement with the, with the EU. I, I feel when I go to Brussels, I feel like almost like a, a lone Swede walking through the corridors there. I don't see many of your familiar faces there. And I think that's a, it's a pity, it's an opportunity that we have missed. Then we, we need to engage with them now. We need to work with them to ensure that, that the directives and regulations coming out of the EU are science-based and evidence-based and risk-based. They need our support. We need to be in Brussels. And it's something I really want to work on over the coming year. And secondly, of course, I'm also trying to work beside the, behind the scenes to encourage the House of Lords to set up a select committee on risk, 
or more likely, establish a subcommittee of the Science and Technology Committee to consider how to engage society in a discussion about risk. This is crucially important, particularly based on the discussions we had shared this morning about the whole issue about the, ma the mass media amplifying many risks that shouldn't be amplified, frightening the public necessarily, making the public think we have a serious health and safety problem. This needs to be addressed sooner rather than later. It's something I hope, by the way, that you also work with me in achieving. Thank you very much.